Hi guys, welcome to the video. I just wanted to take a few seconds of your time to introduce Hantech Minis, a new video format that I decided to come up with to help those who are really short on time. They just want to get in, find the information they need, learn, and get right back to their workflow. Really what I've done is I've carved out sections of our long masterclass videos and consolidated them into small little blocks of five or 10 minutes each. And the idea is they cover one topic and they allow you to learn that topic with practical examples and then get right back to your workflow. So let me go ahead and show you how to locate these videos on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Han Tech. Okay, all one word, at Han Tech. And then if you want to go ahead and look at the playlists, you go ahead and scroll down here and you see playlists right there, okay? So I'm gonna tap that with the playlist and that's gonna open up our playlist, okay? So you can see all of the playlists that we already have loaded here on the YouTube channel. And these are the minis, everything that begins with the HT minis. Right now I've got three playlists set up and let's go ahead and take a look at this one that is actually completed. And what you can do then is you can hit play all and you can watch them in a series or you can pick a specific one and just watch the one that you need to watch that covers the topic you're trying to learn at the time. So now let me show you how to also navigate to our website and find these videos on our website. So here we are at han-tech.com and what you do is you go to free video tutorials and you select thinkorswim tutorials. And from there, you go ahead and locate the menu at the left-hand menu right here. That's called uh, TOS Minis. It stands for Thinkorswim. So you go ahead and open that up. And if you expand that, you'll see as new videos are added to the Hantech Minis, they'll be added here and they will all appear here. So that's how you navigate from our website or from our YouTube channel. And I want to thank you so much for your support. And I'm really excited to be able to present this new shortened video format so that you can get what you need and get right back to work. Okay, so let's dive right in. We're going to be covering the Conditional Wizard. Now the Conditional Wizard is available in the platform in various locations. You will find it in the Scan tab, in the Market Watch tab, Charts, when you edit Studies and you want to create a new study, yes, you can use a Condition Wizard, as well as Watch Lists. You'll be surprised to see what you can do with the Watch List column using the Condition Wizard. Now the Condition Wizard is for those of you who really don't understand how to write code I've never had any experience writing code, and it's a tool that allows you to build conditions using nothing more than the mouse. Now, for those of you who have a little bit of experience writing code, you'll be able to get even more out of this tool, and we'll show you some examples of modifying the code that's generated from the condition wizard. Well, this is find stocks above simple moving average three days. And we get down here, this is the answer that was given, and then go over here to Thinkorswim platform. Well, we're on the Market Watch tab, and from the Market Watch tab, you have different selections. This one here is set to Alerts. So we're on the Alerts section of the Market Watch tab. And on this screen, you see in the far upper right hand corner, you have a button that's called Study Alert. This is one of three different types of alerts that you can have on Thinkorswim. Now a study alert only applies to one stock at a time, just like a chart study alert. A chart study alert operates only on the ticker symbol that's plotted on the chart. The study alert happens to have the benefit of being able to send SMS or email notifications. I'll go ahead and click this and open up the window. I'm going to go ahead and close the reference bar on the right hand side. And now you can see the code that's in the code box. And right now we're on the ThinkScript editor side of the study alert. You can also see that we have a view of the chart and the chart is set to a 15 minute to include extended hours. And at the very bottom, what you have is the alert value. So whatever code is in that code box at the top, that's gonna plot at the bottom so that you can see where an alert would occur that is based upon the rules in the code box. So this is a very handy way to build conditions so that you can see graphically on a chart what it's going to look like. You can see when the alert's going to be triggered or if you apply it to a scan, you can see where the scan is going to be triggered. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and clear out the code that's already here. Notice also 
that the lower subgraph has disappeared because there are no conditions set up to be evaluated. Now, let's go back to the website and we'll go ahead and look at what we've got here. We've got a simple moving average of the close, a 100 period. So let's go ahead and put that on the chart. We're going to go ahead and right click on the chart. Now you can see how I navigate to the edit studies window. Now this is just like any chart on the platform. So I'm going to edit the studies. I'll double click to add that to the chart and then I'll go ahead and click the settings so that I can modify this study and make it a 100 period simple moving average of the close. I'll go ahead and click OK, then apply and OK. And you can see now we have a 100 period moving average on the chart. Let's go back to the website and find out what else we've got to cover. Now, well, okay, so we need three closes above the simple moving average. Okay, and we're going to do this without writing code. We're just going to do it with clicks of the mouse, right? So we go back to Thinkorswim, so then I can go to the condition wizard. So what do we have here? We have check if all of the conditions are met. Now, we can change that, but only after we add some conditions. So let's go ahead and add our first condition. We'll click the Add Condition button, and you can see that we've got an Edit Condition box. What we want to do is select a study for simple moving average. Now I'm going to add this to the condition wizard exactly the same way I would add this to a chart. Here I am adding it to the condition. Now we're going to make sure that we change the default, which is 9, and upgrade that to 100. And once we make a selection in this middle section, the right hand section will open up. And so what we'll do is we'll say the moving average, the 100 period moving average, is less than, and for the price we're going to select close. Which is the same way as saying the close is above the simple moving average. We'll go ahead and click save. So you can see that immediately adds a graph at the bottom, and it's a zero for false, a one for true. And so you can see, let me go ahead and zoom in on the chart here a little bit. And so you can see right here at this point, when that close moves above the simple moving average, the condition is true. But what we want is we want to pick up, we don't want anything beyond the first three bars, okay? Anything from bar four onward should be a false because we only want to pick up when the last three bars have been above the simple moving average. So we need to add more conditions. And we need to add these conditions, we need to apply an offset. Pay very close attention. We're going to click Add Conditions. So we're going to add another line in our condition wizard. Add Condition. And we're going to select a study. And for the study, we're going to select the same simple moving average. And it needs to be greater than Price and select Close. Now we need to apply an offset. So the simple moving average from one bar ago is less than the close of one bar ago. So you see this offset here. The offset is available for both the study and the price. So then watch what happens as we press the save button and add this second condition to the condition wizard. So that the rules say that the current bar must be above the simple moving average, but also the previous bar, that's the offset. The offset is one bar to the left. So it's saying the previous bar must also be above the simple moving average. Watch the graph at the bottom that gives us our true false values as I press the save button. Did you see that? If you blinked, you missed it. Well, what happened is it changed from this bar to this bar. It moved one bar to the right. So we're going to do the same. We're going to add another condition so you get to see this again. And we're going to add another offset. This time it's going to be two bars. So the current bar must be above the simple moving average as well as the two bars prior to that. So we're layering these conditions. They all have to be true in order for this single condition to evaluate true. Watch what happens when I press save. And once again, now we've shifted this true false indicator on the bottom one more bar to the right. So now it's picking up when you have three bars above the simple moving average. But it's also picking up if you have four, five, and six bars above the simple moving average. So what we need to do is we need to tell it that not only are these three conditions need to be true, but we need to say that the previous bar to that, so this is going to be an offset of three, 
that one needs to be below the simple moving average. So we're going to add another condition and we need to apply an offset of three to both of these, okay? So this is now three bars back from the current bar and we're saying the bar, three bars back from the current bar needs to be below the simple moving average. Watch what happens when we click save. Now we have a single true condition for the third bar above the simple moving average and it's false for every other bar that's above the simple moving average. Does that look like magic? It's not, it's very simple. And now you can do it without having to write any code. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. We're going to shrink the chart and expand the conditions above so you can see how we've stacked them. The simple moving average is less than close. Simple moving average from one bar ago is less than the close from two bars ago, from three bars ago. And so you see we've stacked all of these conditions together so that they all must be true in order for the overall condition to be true. So if you apply this to a study alert and apply this to a stock, it's only going to trigger when you have the first time the third bar is above the simple moving average. Okay, we'll let that sink in a little.